Hi everyone, I'm Katie Couric and welcome to Eye to Eye. Forty years after his first Oscar nomination, Alan Arkin is up for Best Supporting Actor as the incorrigible grandpa in Little Miss Sunshine. In a CBS News Sunday morning profile, Arkin told correspondent Jerry Bowen he almost didn't get the part. From what I read, this is a role that you almost didn't get. Almost didn't get it. They thought I was too virile for the part, which is the best turn down I've ever gotten in my life. But what was the process? I mean, you obviously you talked to them, or I mean, how did this come about that you almost didn't? Well, they my name came up, and uh, they said, "No, he's too young and virile for the part." So they passed me by and went on to other people, and then came back to me for some reason. I don't really know exactly what happened. There was some kind of a, an epiphany on their part. They said, wait a minute. I think so, yeah. I think they finally realized that they couldn't do without me. When you're doing a character like this, uh, do you lose yourself in the character? Uh, no, I think that's exactly who I am. <laughs> uh, I, I, I identify with the character. I played a character vaguely similar to that about 15 years ago, and it was the happiest I'd ever been in a film called Joshua Then and Now. I played a very similar kind of guy, just spouting philosophy and knowing nothing about anything. This character is kind of his spiritual father, I think. But I, I, I just identify with people who don't know what they're talking about and will be happy to give advice to anybody who comes along. Uh, it just tickles me. How do you know uh, when you have a character that really resonates? When it's doing you and you're not doing it. It's like anything else in life. There's a place if you're devoted enough to, to an area of your life you'll find it's starting to do you. Uh, and that's, uh, to me, the most joyous experience possible in, in any area. When, when things start happening and you don't have any say over the matter, you're just watching it take place uh, through you and around you. Uh, if you're lucky, if I'm lucky, once in a while it happens with a character for a few minutes. And, and how do you measure success? Is it, is it what a critic may say about a performance? Is it an audience's reaction? Is it something in you? If, we, if, we, if I base my life on what critics would say, would, my life would be a disaster. You, you can't do it. I mean, it's true of anybody. It's not what, it's not, it's what the, your success depends on the goals that you've set out for yourself and, and whether you achieve them or not. Uh, if uh, I think waiting for someone else to give you sanction over what you've done, unless they've been a mentor uh, for most of your life, I think it would be a disaster. I mean, everybody's a critic. I, I haven't met anybody yet who wasn't willing to sit down next to me on an airplane or in a restaurant and tell me exactly what they thought about my last 20 performances, why these were good and why these weren't. And, and yet, once the film is done and it's about to be seen by an audience, I, I read that you have this fear that it's going to tank. I, in, I do? I, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I read, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where? Where did I say that? <clears throat> was a, I uh, want names and dates. <laughs> um, Were you concerned about it? That it was going to tank? Mm. Oh, well, the only, the only thing that made me nervous about that, I, well, I saw the film in a, in a screening with, where there were just a half a dozen people, and I loved it. I just flat out loved it. And then the first time it was shown in front of an audience was at Sundance in a theater that holds about 2,500 people. And then I thought it was going to tank. I said, oh, God. I said, this is an intimate, small, wonderful, little experience. And they're not going to, it's just too big a venue for it. And then they, they went crazy. They just flipped out. They were screaming and yelling and standing ovations. And uh, the comments afterward, we, we had a question and answer period afterwards for people. And people would say, uh, they'd raise their hand and say, we, we, don't, we don't want to comment on the film. We just want to run up on stage and give everybody a hug. <clears throat> and that, that was the kind of reaction we were getting. We were just absolutely overwhelmed by it. I, I've never experienced anything like it. And then uh, the recognition continues. You have this, this nomination. <clears throat> yeah. Is it enjoyable? A lot of it is, yeah. I, I mean, I've been uh, part of it. The thing that's been the most enjoyable aspect of it is is getting phone calls from uh, from people I haven't spoken to in ten, fifteen, sometimes twenty years, calling and really genuinely seem to be happy for me, and that that's very moving. Uh, I like that aspect of it because mm. I, I I understand that you're not enthralled of Hollywood that you don't. 
much care for the, the well, town. Well, no matter where you go in the world, uh, you find people that have different kinds of neuroses. Uh, in, in Hollywood, everybody has the same one. So you, it's a constant barrage of the same, the same neurosis all the time. So uh, give me a different one. I want a new one. Is this nomination, uh, does it have any different meaning? Is it more meaningful than your previous earlier two? Well, I can pay attention to it. The last couple of nominations I got, I was numb. I w it was so, uh, I guess, confused by it. It happened so early. <clears throat> Both of them happened very, uh, very early in my career, and I, I think I just numbed myself out, so I didn't. Uh, also, there wasn't the kind of, uh, it, it hadn't reached, this. it was a long time ago, so it hadn't, the, the pitch of, and fervor hadn't reached the, uh, the uh, uh, the world to the extent it has now. I mean, what, what, how many people watch it now? The, the awards are like a billion, right. a billion and a half. Right. I mean, I look on the blog about the movie and we get things from analyzing the Oscar race from Bombay, from, uh, from Calcutta. It's, it's wild. What memories do you have from early in your career of the Terriers? Good memories? Bad memories? Don't want to talk about memories? <laughs> They were they were wonderful. Uh, um, the whole thing just happened. Well, a lot of the things in my life that uh, besides acting was the only thing I've ever done that I was I had to do and I had to do it in a certain way. And, and uh, I've done a lot of other things, and they were all accidents. They all just kind of happened. The tarriers happened. It was uh, something uh, when I got out of college. Uh, it was a, it was just going to be a job that I did on weekends for, to, to earn some pocket money. And within a couple of months after joining the group, we, we had a hit record that took us around the world for a couple of years. And that was exciting until I got to the Olympia Theater in Paris. And I was playing the guitar and singing my brains out and looked down at myself with my black satin pants on and my, my, my sports shirt opened in the navel, and I said, what the hell am I doing? Who am I? And I said, i got to get back to acting. And I, I quit the next day and starved for another couple of years. What was your hit song? Our hit song was, oh, God, I'm so tired of talking about it. <laughs> Our hit was the Banana Boat song. Before Belafonte. Yeah, you, kn you knew that. You've done your homework, young man. <clears throat> um, yeah, we... Uh, we we had we had never heard the Belafonte verb. Belafonte had recorded his before we did, but he had, it was it was buried on an album that he had done, and uh, we we had swiped ours from the same place he swiped his from two Jamaican folk songs. We put the two together and we wrote new lyrics for it. And we released it as the Banana Boat song, and he heard, he heard our version going up the charts, and he said, "Wait a minute!" So he pulled his off his album and uh, changed the name of his from Deo to the Banana Boat song, and we chased each other up the charts for, for uh, I guess, about six months. And then he sued us. He sued us, saying that we had stolen it from him. We had never heard his song until it was uh, taken off his album. But it got laughed out of court because we, it was realized we both stole ours from the same place. Do you, uh, do you have any roles that, that, in your mind, are your absolute favorites on okay. stage or film? The Kaiser role is the one I've always been... <laughs> <laughs> Had a long run, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have any... any <laughs> <laughs> but I hope... <laughs> yeah, sorry. I apologize. Uh, do I have any fa I, I have a lot, I admit. I have to admit. Um, uh, I know you're, not, not, you're supposed to be harder on yourself, but I guess there's about a dozen things I've done that I have a, have a big affection for. But not always for the same reason. I, uh, I, 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 my, my favorite thing, I, I've always had a, a, just a deep need to, to be with a group of people where everything is working and, and everybody's on the same page, like what happened with Little Miss Sunshine. That to me is the thing that's most memorable to me, when everybody is making the same, uh, making the same thing. And that's happened a lot of times.